Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm Kendall Williams, and this is. I'm Eugene Headland. <laughs> We're going to be discussing a little bit about what Tantra is and the whole world of Tantra, how we got into Tantra, and we're going to be sharing this beautiful, beautiful festival that we have, that we're both facilitating down in Austin, Texas. So Eugene, mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of let you just kind of kick it off. But this is going to be kind of just a, a very organic conversation Great. around Tantra. I know that, you know, I've been a Tantric practitioner for going on 15 years focused work. The Tantric mm -hmm. path for me has been around since I was 15 years old. And I would just love to hear a little bit about how you started on your journey and what the journey has kind of opened up, you know, like what's your tantric story, Eugene? Ah, my tantric story. Um, <laughs> well, tantric came at a time when I, when I, uh, it connected all the dots for me. So I'll, I'll do the, the brief version. I was a mortgage banker in Orange County, California. Wow, no way. Uh, really? Yeah, we're very conservative. I was a partner at a, partner at a national mortgage bank. And um, I went to take my first vacation in, in some years. And I signed up for something without reading all the details. So it's like a bad movie, but actually. Okay. So what I signed up for <laughs> was a, um, a five rhythms intensive, which is a shamanic movement practice. Uh -huh. And what that did was... Um, you know, one, it was quite a shock. Um, you know, if I had had any idea, I wouldn't have done it. There's a longer version of the story, but the, the brief version is it exposed me to a community of people that, that were, that wanted to relate to me, um, not based on my job title or how much money I had, which seems insignificant in hindsight, but it was mind blowing at the time. Mm -hmm. And I, I was kind of a head on a stick. I trusted my mind. I trust what I know. I trust what I can control in life. I used to actually put high value on having control over my life in a way that no one would try to hurt me, no one would try to touch me. The more I can you control very them, armored life, up and guarded. You yeah. were one of those armored and, up guarded and I called it mind strength. guys. Yeah, I, and I called it strength. I, I thought that was that was actually the not just the best way to be for myself, but that that's what people wanted, that, that I'm more lovable the less I reveal my emotions, that my emotions get in the way. And the body is just sort of a tool to get your head from one place to the next. And so this, this practice got me into my body, it got me moving. And then uh, I became curious about my teacher's teachers. So I did a shamanic training with them and that kind of connected me to my, my ancestry and my history in the land. It was in, in the UK, which is my bloodline, you know, I'm from Southern California. And then there was a point some years later where I, where I was literally like, like praying and talking about it. Like, is there, is there something else? Because I felt a lot of energy in my body, including, you know, sexual energy, but also emotional energy. Like, like there's this, this thing and I'm like, it feels real, but no one's talking about it. So I kept dismissing my own experiences. And one day I just started talking to somebody, just blah, 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 lying about it. And she said, have you ever heard of Tantra? There's some people you should meet. And so I went and I did a workshop. Um, and it's, it's the elegant simplicity just, just cracked my heart open in amazing ways. And then I had a conversation with somebody, um, who said, you know, people ask me about Tantra all the time. She was a full-time Dakini. And she said, um, and the truth is I only read one <coughs> book and it, it connected all the dots for me. And so I said, you know, what was the book? So she told me, I shipped it to myself from Amazon. I spent the weekend reading it and you know what? It connected all the dots for me. And that's how I found my lineage of Tantra and my primary teacher. I found uh, Kashmir Shaivism and Daniel Odier, and then that introduced me to the European Tantra community and it kind of goes on from there. And now I'm fully immersed, you know, my, my, my life and my love, everything is, is living Tantra, sharing Tantra, creating events to share more of it. And um, most importantly though, is the living part. Because I'm less interested in, in, you know, what someone can teach, because that can be something you do. But but how do you be? You know, right. what what Tantra gave me was the fundamental permission to find ease with the parts of myself that I thought I had to remove to be worthy of love, on oh, all levels. Beautiful. Worthy of love from, from lovers or allies or friends, worthy of love from society. Like, 
the secret is that I actually wanted to connect with people and I felt like you had to hide your desire to connect in order to have mm -hmm. connection. And there's like a list of things that, you know, we, we come up with to say, what are the things about me that are unacceptable and how do I hide them away? And Tantra in a very practical and fundamental way gives us the permission to not only not hide them, but to look at them and to go deeper into them and to say, these are actually my gifts. The thing about me, the most vulnerable, terrified part of me, the thing that I feel is unlovable is probably the gateway to, to actually connecting and having the love that I dream of. You know, and in, in hindsight, it, it, it makes sense because, you know, in a world where people are saying, why can't anyone love me as I am? In reality, if, I, if I'm honest, I wasn't letting anyone love me as I am because I was hiding parts of me to have their love. And so they never knew who I was. Tantra gave me the permission to say, this is who I am. And I'm willing to show it to you because all of me is worthy of love. And I'm going to give you the gift of seeing that. So, you know, from that, I literally live a life that so far exceeds, you know, I used to be really good with my goal setting and then writing down all these plans and five-year plans right. and stuff. And when I look at my old goals on all levels, professionally, personally, everything, it is so small compared to the magic of life that is possible when we actually just start with, you know, loving, loving the parts of ourselves mm -hmm. that are, that are yearning for that. So yeah, that's what Tantra is to me. It's, that is, uh, that's lovely, man. No, that is. And I love, I mean, what I hear in that, I mean, it's, you're like the example that I'm, I'm going to like, I'm going to give this video to so many of my clients because I, it's, it's exactly what I teach and what I've been teaching, you know, the last 13, 14, 15 years, whatever it's been on this hardcore path of being a coach, educator, practitioner in the world of Tantra is to give people finding their own permission to be themselves to be and in the way you said that you know like to permission to be and we live in this world where we we don't have permission we don't give ourselves permission the world doesn't give us permission mm -hmm. our bosses our employees the people closest to us our partners you know our spouses the people that we're dating our children so often i hear people tell me these stories and i'm like i don't know how you guys how do you do that and they're like they look at me and they're like you have such open relationships with everybody you're open with with me, you're open with your kids, you have, you know, all these people in your life. I'm like, I can't imagine living life any other way. Although, much like you, I have a former life, you know, that life of I'm a Northern California girl. Northern <laughs> so, okay. so, I'm, I'm Chica, <laughs> Chica born. Um, but, you know, and I remember I did not grow up with that tantric. It, I had a very tantric upbringing in one way when I look at it because I didn't have I was very, um, my, my dad had a gold claim. I grew up out in the middle of, you know, the rice fields and the orange groves. Mm -hmm. I had one little boyfriend. We, we would camp and up in, by Truckee, up by Tahoe, you know, every year mm -hmm. we had like three, four months that I was just running naked and free in the woods. Like I was a flower child, you know, and I was playing with my Barbies and, and all that kind of stuff. So I had all of that going on, homeschooled, everything. But then as I entered, I started school in the third grade. I went to traditional, finally started school at third grade. And it was just mm. mind blow to me of, of how crunched down everything was because I did have that open upbringing in that fashion. And then everything got very systematic and structured and everything was not okay. Mm. And then moving into my teen years, you know, it was just that the formulation of, of this is how you need to be. You need to have this presentation. And also that kind of like shut down. I also had a father that did not know how to um, emotionalize things very well. He was that volcano personality. So he would hold everything steady yeah. and then blow. And I had the reverse with my mother. She would drop crying and be, you know, this crazy emotional over everything. So it was the polar yeah, opposite yeah. going on. And I looked at my father as being so strong and so you know, just like, I was like, well, that's the way I should be. I need to be hard. I need to be shut down because my mom's just like all over the place and I'm having to be the parent here with her and I'm the kid and my dad just appeared to be that strong personality. So I grew up trying to be more like him in that aspect, mm -hmm. really develop that strong masculine energy in myself, 
goal setter, OCD yeah. personality, must get everything right, straight A honor roll student, you know, all of yeah. that going on, presented the image. But then I had this wild and free desire, that creative artsy side to me too. So I would mm -hmm. want, wanted all of that. And at like 15, I, I met a boy. I met a boy at 15. Uh -huh. every, every story starts this way, right? <laughs> he was four years older than me, and he's still, we're still the best of friends. I really truly believe, truly believe that it's like because of Tantra that we still have such a deep soul connection from the work that we did mm -hmm. back then. Because we spent a year, he was a very self educated person who did these deep dives, and he had all this understanding. I don't know how any 19 year old boy has that kind, but he did. And I remember him giving me. <laughs> He gave me the labels for the things that I felt, the things that I was experiencing, so that energy inside mm -hmm. the body and everything, you know, like that. And the things that yeah. I, I just intuitively knew, but my parents didn't know. They just said, oh, you're so creative. And he gave right. me the labels for it. And then, of mm -hmm. course, the sexual chemistry that came up between us and my desire. I lost my virginity with him, you know, but it, when we, we dated for a year and did this hardcore, like, tantric training stuff for a year before mm -hmm. having sex. And I thought, well, that's what sex is supposed to be. You know, that's, that's what romance is. That's what relationship is. Like, I had this beautiful picture of it. I mean, I quickly figured out after I got my heart broken a year later or so from him, a year and a half, I ended up you know, rebound, got married six months after a breakup and ended up in a very average and ordinary, no communication, no boundaries, no, um, just, just that, you know, duty based intimacy yeah. happening. It was, just, it was, it was, yeah, real. It was like, it was, I felt the passion. I felt the love there. Yeah. No, you know, and like five years of that went by three kids later. And I woke up and I remember feeling like I had just come out of a coma, you know, just going, where am I? Who am I? Who is this person sleeping next to me? Where did these children come from? It was that one of these just like, whoa moments. And I entered into a deep, dark depression. I was just like, I crashed. I burned. I, I that armor came yeah. off and I started questioning things. And I went into yeah. the dark night of the soul for like two years. It was just yeah. like, oh, it got really, really deep and dark. And in the midst of that, I learned all about nutrition. I wrote a couple books. I did, you know, like I was still being very productive because that's the way I was raised and what I respected. I must that's maintain the image, you know, mm. and keeping all of this stuff at bay, but had developed the same characteristics of my father. So I was that volcanic personality. So it was very, very peaceful. And I had my shit together, except for when I didn't. <laughs> except for when I did. And it was when I turned my 30th year, I decided mm. that I was done. I was just like, I'm done. I can't do this. I had done all these different things in my world, and I still was sad inside. I was still not happy. I felt empty. It just was all surface level. There was no depth to my life. Five kids married all this time frame, you know, and on the outside, it would be like, man, you're so this, you're so that. And you're like, you know, the perfect wife, great mm. mom. And I'm like, but I was dying. I was just withering. And I remember digging up a book that I picked up in, um, just outside of Virginia City, Nevada with my high school boyfriend, you know, we, years back. I put it down on my husband's desk at the time and I said, I want to study this. And it was a tantric book from Margot Anand. And I was like, mm. I want to study this. I'm bringing this back in. And he looked at me and he said, you're crazy. You're crazy. And I said, well, I'm doing it with or without you. But a week later I had called in a tantric teacher into my life and I had been, I started down that process. It was just like, it just, I, my energy shifted. I had developed some health issues. I developed Crohn's and all my health nutrition, all the fitness stuff I was doing for me. And here I have Crohn's, which was just, fatiguing. and something inside of me knew that it was this one piece that I hadn't dealt with. It was this piece of like, what really makes me happy? Why am I not happy? Like, why? That's a question and a half, right? Like, why are you not happy? Why are you not happy? And I started asking myself that. And then I just, it came back to the shame that I was holding, the not giving myself permission to be me, to try to fit the, you know, this cookie cutter lifestyle that everybody's trying to fit. And the thinking that as long as I kept my head down and I did that, that I would find happiness, I would be successful. 
in that, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, if I had the biggest house, if I had the right car, if I had this money in the bank, if my kids had this brand of clothes on, if you know, all that stuff, yeah, that, yeah. Would be, that, that would be it. And I did some deep dive work on that front side and I, it took me about 90 days. That's it. 90 days of doing work on me. And I was just, I have to, I have to get this message out. Like my true calling here is to share, to share this practice mm -hmm. because it, within 90 days, Crohn's was gone. I was more confident. I felt fuller. I felt more alive, more tapped in, mm -hmm. just that natural flow of life and abundance mm -hmm. in all things. You know, and I was yeah. giving myself permission is the correct word. You know, it, it is. It's just like giving yourself permission to be you. And I think that that's probably really what that tantric path is. Ultimately, to sum it up, it's because yeah. what is tantric? It's weaving everything together, right? It's weaving all of our life together. Not full embodiment. But it is mm -hmm. we embody and we give ourselves permission to live. And the biggest thing that we don't do in our world today is actually live. We just exist, which is where my tagline yeah. comes from. Stop existing, start living. Like that is to me, I'm like, that's my yeah. tantric tagline is just stop existing and start living. Like own your power, claim your power, claim your life. Stop just getting yeah. by and accepting that. So. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. It's um, I was just having a conversation with someone today and this one of my big passions is bringing us to awareness that there's a lot of this sort of macho talk about all the things that we're willing to die for. And the thing is, in reality, you don't have to have a reason to die. It's going to happen. Yeah. But what are, you, what are you willing to live for? Because living is a choice. Existing is simple. And you'll go through that process and mercifully it will end someday. But to actually choose to live, to choose to be out on our edge and experience yeah. life and take risks that's that's what i'm interested in and we don't because we don't feel worthy of this life most people are 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 bought into a system of trying to find value for themselves to to actually have the right to live so that so before they can take a step towards what would i do in my in my magical life they have to actually feel like it's okay for them to have a life and so they're seeking a purpose but they're seeking purpose through the filter of there's a right and a wrong way to be. So I got to figure out the right way to be and also all the wrong way not to be. And this is where this, this concept of Tantra, the, 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 the weaving comes in because it's the weaving of two things that may seem opposite to create something new without losing their original pieces. And this ties to one of the great Tantric axioms, which is all the suffering in life is derived from the illusion that we have to choose. Yep. Like in your story, you were saying, you know, do, do, I, do I choose my, my spiritual self or my productivity? Do I choose having a family or having, you know, an open expression of love? And when we feel we have to choose one of these, it doesn't matter which one we choose because there's a part of us that is woven in both. And when we choose one, we deny part of the other and we create separation. So what happens is the pain that we feel inside because we've separated a part of ourself, we then amplify outside. So like if, you, if we want to know what are the parts of me that I'm yearning to love, what are the things I judge in others? Because I'm triggered by the people who are doing the things that I want to do. You know? And so the tantric way is actually bringing us in. Like sometimes people see the energy work and the dance and they think, oh, tantra brings you out of your body and to go up. And that's <laughs> actually... No, Nonsense. One must it go brings us in embodiment. Yeah. Yeah. Go in deeper and go down. And when something comes up, like we, we say, the solution is always in the problem. So when something is triggering me or there's an uncomfortable feeling, instead of trying to figure out how do I make it stop, we do what we don't want to do. We go into it. Feel it mm -hmm. more. If I'm feeling uncomfortable, go deeper into the discomfort. Let it fill you. Feel completely uncomfortable and then listen to it why what's actually happening here because it's your feeling and you actually have a right to it you have a right to your anger a right to your grief a right to all these things like the tantric way gives us the, you know our rights back like it's so simple you know the the a lot of the practices 
can look very esoteric and complicated, but underneath it, they're all very simple. I have a body, so let me inhabit it. Let me actually feel from within my body. And can I find ease in being in the form that I'm in? Instead of comparing it or wishing it were different, can I just find ease in my body? Because that's all it wants to do is feel ease. I have emotions. They try to figure out what to do with their emotions. It's like, don't do anything with them. Just feel them. All yeah. of them, all the time. There's because no you feel emotion that's evil move. or wrong. I mean, I'm constantly, yeah. that's like one of the biggest lessons with the people that I work with is, you know, like right now it's a running theme with a lot of my clients that they're just shut down around the word anger. They're like, well, anger is sinful. Anger, anger is evil. Anger is something that I should not be feeling. I'm like, so if it's something that you should not be feeling, then why is it even an option? You know, it's here because it is a natural emotion. It is here much like sadness is an emotion. Bliss is an emotion. You know, mm -hmm. all of these things that we feel and everything that we do, all those goals that you and I used to have in those old worlds and that we still have our goals of today, right? Our desires, those goals, desires that we have, why do we want anything that we want to gain a feeling to stimulate an emotional response to the life that we should be living right that we're that we're in right now but then when we resist and push back any emotion we're also resisting the opposite that we're trying to gain yeah the thing of emotions are incredible teachers and they're a self-regulating mechanism so mm -hmm. when i come off center an emotion comes so anger is one that gets a really bad rap um <laughs> yeah. but what 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 anger actually teaches me is where my boundaries are because we, mm -hmm. we have artificial boundaries that are where I want them to be, or I think they should be to please somebody else. But when anger comes, it comes instantly. And it comes when someone has crossed my boundary or I've crossed my own boundary. So if I let myself feel it, then it moves through and it teaches me authentically where my boundaries are, which is important to know because if I don't know where my outer edge is, then who am I? So if I wanna know who I am, I actually have to have a really good relationship to anger. When I bottle it up, the problem is that because people have decided that there's something wrong with it, they try to control it and they shut it down. And then because it's energy, it will eventually move. But it moves at a time that's not of their choosing and in an unhealthy way, and it's usually destructive. And then they say, see, I told you the anger's bad. It's like, right. no, you trying to control this volcano is bad. Right. Your anger is simply pure. Our emotions are innocent. They're wild and free and innocent, and they're teaching us. Just like grief, the people who won't hold, who won't allow grief, are the ones who really, they, they ice over their hearts. They have a limited capacity to feel love because grief actually teaches us what we love. We only grieve the things that we truly love, and sometimes it's a surprise. Like if you ever had someone exit your life and you wept far more than you imagined you would, you're like, wow, I love them more than I ever knew. And so it, it, by teaching us, it helps us to actually call more of that which we love into our lives. But the access point to love is grief. The access point to our healthy, strong boundaries is anger. You know, it's like these emotions are actually there to bring us back to ease and in more clarity and relaxation and being who we are authentically, not the story of who we are that we're trying to push on people, which is actually hurting us because... The problem is when we create a story of self and we sell it, the worst thing that happens is that somebody buys it because now I have to keep separating me to keep you because I haven't actually let you love me. And that's the tragedy. So many of our relationships are based on creating persona and then people fall in love or into friendship with the persona. And I can't maintain that relationship unless I continue to cut myself off. And yep. all the Tantra guards do is give us some tools to feel enough ease in who we are that we're willing to reveal it to others so that we can start having the authentic, loving relationships that we're yearning for and are right. only possible when we're completely there. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I am 100% on board with you. You can be more accurate there. That's exactly yeah. what... And that's exactly what my whole practice is. And that's all I know we that do. That, it's, it's, I, yeah. it's all we do. Like, I tell people, all I do is show you a mirror. <laughs> if you were pleased with who you are, I'd have to get a different job. But fundamentally, all I do, because I don't know anything. And I think the biggest gift I give people as a facilitator is, you know, and not as a meme, like I, you know, I couldn't possibly know something about you, but I can see, I can care, and I can mirror mm -hmm. back. 
and everything I'm going to mirror back is into yourself. And when you're in yeah. ease with that, then you're going to be in ease with me and with everyone. You know, yeah. it's like, this is, this is all we do. Tantra is a big mirror, but that's why it's so confrontational because, you know, like, like go stand in front of a mirror for a half an hour and love everything you see and see, yeah. yeah, this is a tough path. You know, people see like, Oh, they're dancing around they're They're making love and doing all these things. It's like, there's a lot of work that goes into feeling and ease enough with yourself to be able to show up and celebrate life with other people. Well, the only way you can ever connect truly and love another and really like be open enough and present enough to witness another person and connect at that deep, what true intimate level, you know, from that emotional, mental, spiritual level, not just the physical is to have done the work to be able to witness self and to consistently yeah. be witnessing self. You know, I, I hear often people go, well, how long is this going to take? You know, how long is this going to take? When am I going to be, when am I going to be through this process? And then I'd say like, I've, I've reached, I've reached the end, right? Like that's that. I'm going, no, like it, it doesn't end till your life is done, you know? And I can't speak for the aftermath there. I'm pretty sure it probably goes on, but in this moment of this ex physical existence that we have, you're never mm -hmm. done. Like, the tantric path or whether you, t and I always tell people, I'm like, no matter what, you're on a tantric path. It's just kind of like air, you know, it's there. It doesn't matter if you're actually believing in it or focused on it or not. We're all on a journey and life is yeah. always weaving together. There's nobody that doesn't have every piece of their life interwoven, no matter how much they try to segregate it out and, you know, compartmentalize stuff. It's still blending. It's still impacting all other areas of their life. They just may not be present or conscious to it, but it's still happening. So much like the air we breathe, right? We don't see it, but we're all breathing it. And you know, and and with that, it's like you you don't get to just go and I'm done. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not walking this path anymore. You no, know, then you know, what are you six feet under? Because this is this is your life and this journey and this learning, this growing. It's going to happen and you consistently have to go in. You know, I know that it is a moment to moment practice for myself. I just have like my bag of tools and I'm like, I have a Mary Poppins bag full of tips and tools and I just know yeah. what to access. And it's now just so natural for me to access those things. What used to take me two months, three months to move through would really, I would get stuck in like quicksand. Mm -hmm. Now I go, I, I go, I hit my pause button. I'm like, I need, I'm putting myself on timeout for two minutes. You know, and I lock myself in the bathroom or the staircase. And I'm just like, I'm taking a two minute break. Right. And I sit down on the yeah. toilet and I do mirror gazing with myself. I just do the eye gazing with myself and I just go and do those internal processing that I've learned yeah. over the course of my life. And yeah. two minutes later, I'm like, okay, I'm good now. Like I'm good. I'm good. I see that. I see where my ego had me there. I see where I'm overstepping my boundaries or that person's boundaries where I'm, you know, having expectations that I shouldn't be having, you know, mm. desires there that aren't needed, or I'm not giving myself permission to really speak my truth in this moment where I'm holding, I'm resisting, I'm blocking. And it's just those quick authenticities with self, but we've got yeah. to, we've got to be willing to do that. And that's that, that's that hard work. That's that, Ooh, like it is, it's that staring in the mirror. If you were to strip yourself completely naked and stare in the mirror for 30 minutes, you know, the first 25 minutes, you're going to probably critique yourself and tear everything down first. Mm -hmm. And then you might get to that point of like, okay, well, I do like this about myself, but you know, yeah. I wish that this was different. And we go through that, but that's that consistent processing of truth bearing and witnessing of self and learning how to fall back in love with self, give yourself permission, stop buying the bogus bullshit ideas and belief structures of society, our teachers, our parents, our friends, you know, all of that stuff, because most of us live in that bubble, right? The, the majority of the world lives in this bubble that buys into what everybody else's concepts are and beliefs are. And then they wonder, well, how do those people out there that are living so free and joyous, what are they doing? Well, they actually have gained awareness, right? They've gained some awareness to their life. They've gained presence. They've gone and done some internal work. They can see who they really are. They're getting more authentic with themselves. And then, of course, mm -hmm. moving out and tapping into more of that spiritual, like what is 
truly your mission, your purpose, like where's those desires. And that's where like you and I, I think are kind of at ne next realm because we're both wanting to, to share, to speak out. How can we tap in and help this world become more yeah. authentic, become more true, real with themselves. And it's that real, we, we have a tough time being authentic. It's really what it is because yeah. we're scared that we're not going to be accepted because of the illusion. So. Yeah. It's actually the, um, it's a comedy and a tragedy at the same time because all the separation, the pain that people are experiencing in life is actually because they're yearning to connect. And they're yearning to connect so deeply that they're afraid of being disconnected. They're afraid of being separate. And so they separate themselves to create connection, which then makes connection impossible. And we just right. loop this. Yeah. And then when we see somebody step out, it can be so triggering because we're not giving ourselves the permission to do the same. And that's, that's why I love the, the, the events because they bring people together and give them an opportunity to just breathe and see each other and realize we're more alike than different. And actually, under it all, we, we just wanna be okay. We just wanna be in ease with who we are. And, and from that ease, it's not so challenging to be at ease with other people. And we create a lot of energy and a lot of pomp around, you know, refining our identity and, and trying to be something that's lovable. But the thing that we're doing and trying to create is actually just what, in our earliest programming, we identified what we thought would be the most efficient way to get love. And then we become experts at that because we want to get love. And when we feel we're full of love from others, mm -hmm. then we can begin to live our own life. So we have it backwards. The tantric way says, no, remember, fundamentally remember. And that's what our practices and meditations and things are about is to have an embodied remembering. You are connected to the source of all things. Therefore, you're, you don't have to become worthy of love. You're already in that channel. So if you stop seeking love, who would you be? And you just gave yourself the permission to say, and I'm here and I'm in this form and I have this life for some reason. And I don't have to spend my energy trying to find out, can I be worthy of love in my life? It's like, no, no. The fact that you have a life means that you're worthy of love in your life. So now what? Yeah. And say, well, if I'm going to live my purpose, then it has to be uniquely mine. And so maybe I need to be who I am and actually open to the possibility that if my preferences in life are different than your preferences, that it isn't in opposition of each other, that one of us isn't right or wrong, we just have different preferences. Because the more at ease we are with each other and our preferences, the more we'll have ease for other people and their preferences. So all the tantric way does is bring us into ourself to create more ease in being who we are, because then there's a domino effect. When I'm in ease with who I am, I'm not blaming people for shit. And I'm not looking for enemies and where do I need to build walls. I have a lot of acceptance for what comes because I'm in my own, my own world. I'm inhabiting myself and I'm in ease with my life. Right. It's when we're in dis-ease with our life and we're feeling pain and we think I shouldn't be in pain. Someone's hurting me. I'm going to find out who it is. And that's the world we're in now. People are hurting. And they're trying to figure out who to blame. And so they create a lot of conflict. But the conflict is because they actually want to stop fighting. They actually want to love. Yeah. But they yeah. don't believe they're worthy of love. And since they don't believe they're worthy of love, they're in pain. And since they're in pain, they think someone's causing it. When actually, it's inside. Yeah. You have the keys already. You don't have to earn them. You're already there. And that's, yeah. that's the whole mystery. And when people get there, they laugh and they cry. And they laugh and they cry because it's hilarious. It's so simple. It's, it's, so simple. Yeah. it's always been yeah. there. The keys have always it's, been there. It's you know, it, it really is one of those Wizard of Oz Dorothy moments of that you never had to leave home. You know, it, everything that you ever yeah. wanted was right there, you know, and the magic has always been with you. It's always been right with you. And that's the whole beauty. And I know I hear over and over again. And I know that even, you know, when I was 30, I thought to myself, why did I take so long to remember this? It's like, I've always known that. And I hear people always say that to me, like, why did I wait the last, where, where, where has this been the last 40, 45 years of my life? Where has this been, you know, the last whatever time frame? And the truth is, is that it's always with us. And it is the simplest thing. 
It's just a, a relearning of, it's an unlearning of the structures, the illusions of our world. And it is a remembering of our truth and, and what we innately know. We just feel like that can't be, it can't be that simple. It can't be that, that's really it. If that's it, yeah, and yeah, yeah, it is, and it is everything. It is absolutely everything. When you tap into that, you tap into this beautiful alignment with with mm -hmm. life and with the universe, with God, and that is where that like divinity really comes from. Is that you're just like really stepping into this beautiful state of power where coincidences and life becomes magical. And there's yes. these deep moments with random strangers where mm -hmm. you can just have this moment and it's just like all of this stuff happens and yet it's just a flicker and there's just this deep understanding and, you know, just beautiful, intuitive things going on. So. Yeah. One of well, my personal phrases, I yeah, just say one of the phrases I think you'll like is I like to say what we call magic is more real than what we call real. Yes. And, and this just, awakens us to that remembering and and when it happens you'll realize you were feeling it all your life all the things you ever called luck coincidence passing thoughts daydreaming all the wisdom that came all the premonitions and then they came true that you dismissed magic was knocking at your door begging you to see what an amazing interconnected magical world we're in and you're part of and you kept dismissing it all the time with these little phrases like, oh, that's just luck. Oh, that's just chance. Oh, that's just a coincidence. And then one day you realize everything is functioning. There is no randomization. There is no coincidence. It's you being aligned. Mm -hmm. And then, then life gets really exciting because we start to see, the, you know, the big magics are amazing. I like all the little ones throughout the day that are just constantly reminding you, like, I'm part of something bigger. And... I can be, I can let myself be part of something bigger. And I don't need to understand in my mind how it works because I feel it in my body, I feel it in my soul. I'm here, I'm not a mistake, I'm part of everything. And that's like the biggest thing for people, especially like I, raised, I was raised Mormon. Like if you have a background that told you that you were separate from creation, you were separate from the divine, to you know, recast that die and say, there are no mistakes in creation. There's nothing separate from creation, including me. So if I'm not a mistake and I'm part of it, and then it means I'm worthy of love, what will I do with the magic of this life? And that's all Tantra does is it gives us our life back. It doesn't do anything else. It doesn't teach you shit. It just <laughs> reminds you that you already knew everything and you didn't need to ask anybody. That before, when you were a child and you were moving from innocence, from wild innocence, you felt all this. And then one day you were told, no, 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 don't do that. That doesn't matter. This matters. And the world started to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And because you loved so much, you let it get smaller. There's nothing wrong with you. You did your best to love because mm -hmm. the people who, who were in charge of your life and who loved you the best way they could taught you those things. So no one's fucked up. We've just been teaching each other bad information. Right. Tantra gives us the good information, which is, hey, the innocence inside of you, trust it. Trust it, and it will open up a world of magic, and you'll have joy beyond what you ever imagined. And you don't have to do a damn thing to earn it. <laughs> That's so true. So true. So we have a festival coming up. We do. You are going to be here in Texas. And did you say to me that this is your, going to be your first time in Texas? Is that what you said? Well, Chat? It's my first time in Texas because because I fly a lot and I fly American okay. and so I've been to DFW many times but I don't know that that counts. This that will be my first count. time leaving the airport. <laughs> okay, all right. So actually staying in Texas. Austin, and I'm going to have an experience of Texas for the first time. Yes. <laughs> so I'm very well, excited. We'll, I'm hearing we'll to... right now. It's in the in the in the, the cold north. That's why I'm all you know turtlenecked <laughs> up. I'm very much looking it's forward. It's a little chilly here too. We got sunshine right now. I'm hoping that next weekend, it, the weather of today is next weekend for Austin. But you know, I'm up in Dallas, so I'm three, three and a half hours out of Austin. But okay. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, it looks like it's going to be just. We've got some phenomenal facilitators coming. Mm -hmm. Definitely some beautiful educators and teachers. Um, and this is going to be the 13th, 14th, and 15th of December 
down in Austin. Yes. I will make sure that links are provided in all the comments section and link to our video here for all of our viewers and everything. But yeah, it is going to be, is there anything that you want to share? Like as far as like just the little. Yeah, just briefly, the reason why do we do a festival? Um, I've been teaching at Tantra festivals in Europe for almost a decade now. And I witnessed the way that they did two primary things. One, it's an entry point for people who are curious about Tantra. It's like, oh, I don't want to, I'm curious, but I, I don't know where to start. And, and I don't want to get it wrong. And I don't want to commit to any of these weird, creepy teachers because I don't know who they are and all this. So a festival, you come, you have a whole um, schedule of lots of different events with different teachers, and you don't have to go to any of them, actually. You don't have to commit to anything. Maybe you go to one thing. Maybe you're someone who goes to you know, workshop after workshop after workshop. You get to choose your own adventure. So it gives you an opportunity to experience different teachers, different flavors, and do it at your pace. And that's really exciting for me as someone that wants to share this, but I don't want to, you know, beat people with it. I want to invite them. The door's open and you've got lots of choices. So when you come to a festival, you stay in choice the whole time. And you can get different experiences, which, you know, we all have a different perspective. So instead of saying, oh, I went to one workshop and I heard one teacher's idea, maybe you're going to get 10 different teacher's ideas, which is amazing. And you get to meet other people that are just like you. They're curious, they're vulnerable, they're leaning into their courage. And a lot of us feel like we're alone in this environment. And so to actually realize like, wait, I'm not the only one that's curious about this stuff, you know, me here as well. And so it, it gives people different experiences. It's a safe entry point for everybody. And it grows the community as we realize there's more of us than we thought. And so seeing Europe go from as it's been in the States, you know, a, a series of cities with local teachers to become one Tantra community, one conscious community where people are just moving between cities, between festivals, because they've met each other over and over in different places. I saw that's something that the U.S. needs. So I bought my first festival five years ago to California. And then two years later, we started them on the East Coast. And this is the first one in Texas. So really excited to, I have a couple of amazing allies who did one of my, my teacher trainings that are based in Austin. And they had the courage to put up their hand and say, we will find a place and we want this here. We want, our community needs it and we're willing to do what it takes. So Scott and Melanie have been amazing That's allies to hold, to hold point for something that there's no history of and we don't know how it's gonna go. But they, yeah. they, they believe and they invited me and I've invited you and others. <laughs> and we're gonna, we're gonna co-create something in, in the magic of the moment together that is meant to serve others to love themselves more. That's it. Yeah, so, that is beautiful. Yeah, I'm exciting. definitely looking forward to it. It looks, I mean, I'm very excited to meet all the other teachers around the area and everybody that's coming in. I've been um, trying to support Scotty and Melanie for gosh, the last two years or so. So yeah. um, I'm excited to be able to also support you and make this whole event happen and bring this to Austin, to the Texas area, really. You know, yeah. I know I've got some people up here that are coming down to go to that event, which is going to be phenomenal. The workshops look like there's some a really great selection of different types of workshops, lots of opportunities for people to kind of experience all the different um arms of tantra i'll just call it that because yeah. it looks like there's facilitators for everything you know everywhere from the <laughs> magic woo woo to conscious touch to some shadow work stuff some talks some experiential work yeah. it's just definitely going to be dance and, and meditation everything there and like you said you you know everybody's their own uh, person here nobody's being forced to do anything and as a festival is you can kind of just poke your head in and check things out. You get to stay in choice and just experience what you experience. Sometimes, sometimes the best experience is probably not to do necessarily anything. Some people just need to just be able to just breathe into the energy of I went to this and that's perfectly exactly. fine too, you know? That's, that's, and none that's of the revolutionary to so just be there. Yeah, and as you said, this is for, you know, this is that beginner level. This is the, the, the get your feet in the pool and experience mm -hmm. the taste of the water a little bit, just to feel the sensation of that, not the deep dive where you're you're doing the hardcore work that us practitioners have probably gone through. So <laughs> this yeah. is that whole experiential yeah. of you know really just 
And I know that that's a lot of the feedback that I've been getting is like, well, what is exactly taking place, you know, because of the, the word Tantra and, and some of the yeah, okay. belief structures that we have definitely in, in the Western world around what Tantra means. And that's why I wanted to do this talk with you was to kind of clear some of that up that Tantra is about what, what you just, what we've kind of, I hope we've kind of gotten a point across of that. It's about giving permission to be authentically you, to just be. And there you have it. It is that simple. We're not going to teach you anything, but we're just going to reawaken you to the possibility of you. And that is it. And how you choose to go about it is uniquely yours. And you're already worthy of this life. You're worthy of your happiness. You're worthy of your abundance, your joy. So just like, yeah. let's just, the, the whole stripping down, the getting naked. My teacher has a statement of what he always said to me is, I want you to come naked in every way. You know, and that is like, that's, and it's not just the nakedness of our bodies because a lot of people can get naked and that's, you know what, we can strip our clothes off, but we're still not revealing ourselves. We're still not accessing and surrendering to our core. And that is that, that nakedness there. That's called authenticity, our truth, you know, and that's where the real true radiance of our souls get to shine is in that. So yeah. I'm excited for this event and to be able to share it with everybody and, and just kind yeah. of, yeah, I'm super excited. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. And I mean, and it's, our, and it's, it's a, it's a beacon. I, I know personally people flying in from New York, San Francisco, North Carolina, and Florida, just for this, uh, people are driving and flying in like, like right. it's, it's a special thing. And yeah. You know, together with teachers who are coming to be in service, it's it's something really special. Like we're we're gathered together to love ourselves more. Full stop. There's ten thousand ways we could do it, but, but just stepping in the door is already a, a major statement, yeah, on an energetically and a practical level. So yeah, I'm I'm excited. Man. I'm flying in from Sweden just for this, and then flying back. So I'm, I'm super honored to come and meet the community in this way, and yeah forward to seeing everybody well it'll be beautiful absolutely beautiful thank you so much for taking the time out of your out of your day and and well i don't know what time is it where you're at night it is 7 30 <laughs> feels like midnight because it's been dark since three. Oh my goodness oh my north goodness. it's crazy yeah but uh yeah it's, it was a beautiful winter stillness so yeah cool cool well thank you for taking the time out of your your schedule for doing this and I really look forward to connecting face to face down in yes. yes. Austin for sure. Um, yeah. So yeah. And for anybody who is watching this, make sure to click on the links, get registered. Mm -hmm. I know that are we do we have a, a cap out points or no we've got we we've got space. Okay. We've got space, we've got but space. what is but what is happening is is the 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 ticket price goes up as they sell through tiers and so we're moving right. through the second tier of tickets so there's only so many of those left and then the price will go okay. up so okay. you know it's better to do it so now than to wait for the third day. Right. Yeah. grab the tickets yeah. now before the tier sells out yep mm -hmm. okay well um beautiful thank you so much eugene i thank will you, uh, yes yes thank you i look forward to seeing you next weekend and to everybody else who is watching and can make it to austin texas for the 13th 14th and 15th and then um mm -hmm. what's there because it's going to be quite the experience very very turned on real raw connective ed educational playful insightful and permission oriented and that permission is for each of us to give ourselves a little bit more of it so everything, everything in the world, please mm -hmm. well, thank you eugene and thank i will you. see you next weekend then everybody else i'll see you tomorrow see you or later week. today on conscious coffee <laughs> okay all right namaste uh, bye uh,